Hello, and welcome to the tutorial on deep declarative networks and differentiable optimization layers held virtually at ECCV 2020. My name is Itzik Ben Shabbat, and today I will be guiding you through the amazing talks we have prepared for you. Our first module will focus on deep declarative networks or DDNs. First off, Stephen Gould from ANU will give some background and motivation and then dive into some theoretical aspects of deep declarative networks. Next, Dylan Campbell from ANU will talk about DDN applications in computer vision and also give a hands-on coding session on how to use the DDN code base. Our second module will focus on differentiable convex optimization layers and CVX pi layers. First, Stephen Diamond from Stanford will give some background and basic concepts of convex optimization layers. Next, Brandon Amos from Facebook will explain some implementation considerations and present applications in controls and data poisoning. Finally, Akshay Agarwal from Stanford will give a hands-on coding session on how you use the CVX Pi layers package with PyTorch. Further details as well as archive talks and code are available at the tutorials website at eccv2020.deepdeclarativenetworks.com. So without further ado, let's get started. I'd like to start by introducing three key ideas that will help set the groundwork for the remainder of the tutorial. The first idea is thinking of deep learning models or deep neural networks as a data flow graph, which defines how data is processed in the forward pass to arrive at some prediction or estimation. In turn, this defines the output of the network as a composition of functions, each function taking its input from the parent node in the graph. The graph structure also defines how error signals or gradients are propagated in the backward pass for updating model parameters. Each processing node, sometimes called a layer in a data flow graph, is then responsible for two primary operations. One, computing the output of its input and parameters in the forward pass. And two, computing the gradient of the error signal with respect to its inputs and parameters, given the gradient of the error signal with respect to its outputs in the backward pass. These are the fundamental operations needed for inference and learning. So long as a node can compute the gradient of its output with respect to its input, the error signal gradient can be computed via the chain rule of differentiation all the way from the output of the network to its inputs. We'll see efficient ways of doing this for large problems later in the tutorial. The second idea is that the implementation of the forward and backward pass can be decoupled. While automatic differentiation is an amazing tool that allows us to write forward functions and have the gradients automatically computed, this can be inefficient when the forward function cannot be expressed in closed form. Consider a simple toy example of computing a square root. This can be done using the well-known Babylonian algorithm as shown on the slide. Now, one way to compute the gradient in the backward pass is to simply unroll the loop in the forward pass and iteratively apply the chain rule. This, however, is extremely inefficient and numerically unstable, given that we can compute the derivative of the square root function analytically. That is, if we know that the function or the Babylonian algorithm computes the square root of x and assigns it to y, then we can just compute dy dx as 1 over the 2 times the square root of x, or 1 over 2y. Of course, this is just a toy example, and all deep learning frameworks provide implementations of forward and backward functions for many mathematical primitives, including the square root. But this will become important later when we look at differentiable optimization problems which do not have closed form forward implementations. So in summary, when developing deep learning models, we typically use automatic differentiation to derive the backward function from the implementation of the forward function. And this is great for most traditional deep learning models. But it's important to remember that we don't have to use automatic differentiation. We can separate the implementation details of the forward and backward passes so long as the backward pass computes the gradient or indeed just a descent direction for the forward pass. Here I have shown a schematic illustration for the toy example of taking square roots. The third key idea that I would like to introduce is the idea of implicit functions. 
In most deep learning models that you would have seen, there is an explicit definition of the output of a node given its input. That is, we can usually write down a mathematical expression or simple non-iterative algorithm that will compute the output from the input. Given such an expression, it is straightforward, albeit tedious, to compute the derivative of the output with respect to the input. However, there is another type of function that will be of interest to us, the implicit function. Here, the input and output satisfy a relationship, but the output is not given directly as an explicit function of the input. Here I am showing an example of a relationship between a single input x and two output variables y1 and y2. Rather than specifying y as a function of x, we have that x and y satisfy some implicit function, psi of x and y equals zero. So given the input x, we need a method of finding the corresponding y's, i.e. those that satisfy the implicit function jointly with x. More on this later in the tutorial. Here I am showing the implicit equation that defines the solution space for the example just given. Note that we can think of this equation as defining a link between the input x and the outputs y, as well as constraints on the output variables y. And on this slide, I'm showing the zero level sets for the function psi, which shows the relationship between inputs and output variables. Now, despite not having an explicit formula, we can still compute the gradient of y with respect to x using the implicit function theorem. For every x in the range minus one to one, there are exactly four solutions. For the case of x equals plus or minus one, there are only two solutions. The implicit function theorem answers the question of what is dy dx given an implicit function psi of x comma y equals zero when it exists. Its origin can be traced back to the works of Descartes, Leibniz, Bernoulli, and Euler. Cauchy was the first to place the theorem on rigorous mathematical grounds, and it was Dini, shown here, who first presented the theorem in its modern multivariate form. By implicitly differentiating psi of x comma y, we arrive at the equation dy dx equals minus the inverse of d psi dy times d psi dx. I now want to introduce the idea of deep declarative networks. As discussed at the beginning, a conventional deep learning architecture involves composition of simple feedforward processing functions that are explicitly defined. Recently, researchers have been exploring deep learning models with embedded differentiable optimization problems inside. Here I am showing the link between the implicit function that I showed earlier and its equivalent optimization problem. That is, given an input x, solving the optimization problem will find the y's that satisfy the implicit function, which in this case we call the optimality condition. To distinguish conventional deep learning models from those with embedded optimization problems, we call the latter deep declarative networks, borrowing from the nomenclature of the programming languages community. Here, an imperative node in a traditional deep learning model explicitly defines the output of the node as a function of its input. In a declarative node, the input and output relationship is specified as the solution to an optimization problem. Let's look at a simple example, global average pooling. Here, we wish to compute the average of a set of input vectors xi. We can write this problem in two different ways. The imperative specification has an explicit formula for the output y as a function of the input x. The declarative specification writes the relationship between y and x as an optimization problem. The advantage of thinking about pooling in this way is that it allows us to replace averages with robust averages by minimizing over a robust penalty function instead of the L2 distance. This example shows that some operations can be considered either imperatively or declaratively. It turns out that all imperative nodes can be expressed as declarative nodes, but you don't have to do this. Imperative and declarative nodes can coexist in the same network. So looking at our data flow graph from before, we can intermix declarative and imperative nodes. And likewise, the composition of functions that our network defines includes embedded optimization problems. 
Assuming that we can solve the optimization problem in the forward pass, the main question in deep declarative networks becomes how to compute the derivative of the solution with respect to the input or parameters in the backward pass. This would then allow us to backpropagate gradients necessary for learning. We have already seen all the ingredients we need for this, namely the optimality conditions of the problem in the form of an implicit function and the implicit function theorem. So now William Karash, Harold Kuhn and Albert Tucker, famous for the KKT optimality conditions, join Ulysses Dinney to give us the result that we need. Given an optimization problem defined in terms of a continuous objective and constraints on the variables, we can write down an equation that gives us the derivative of a particular solution with respect to the inputs. The expression contains terms which involve partial first and second order derivatives of the objective and constraint functions. The proof of this result is a straightforward application of the implicit function theorem to the KKT optimality conditions. Here is a sketch of the proof for the unconstrained case. Given that y is the solution of an optimization problem over some unconstrained variable u for function f of x comma u, we know that the solution must occur when the derivative of the function f with respect to y equals zero. Defining this as the implicit function psi and applying the implicit function theorem gives us the result that we're looking for. Note that the problem does not need to be convex, although we will see later that convex optimization problems have nice properties that will help us avoid other difficulties. So the three key ideas covered in this introduction, deep learning as data flow graphs, decoupling of the forward and backward implementations, and the implicit function theorem have led us to deep declarative nodes. These are nodes in networks whose forward function is defined as the solution to an optimization problem and whose backward function is computed based on the optimality conditions for that optimization problem. What do we need to implement a deep declarative node? Well, for the forward pass, we need a method for solving the optimization problem. In the backward pass, we only need to know the objective and constraints for the problem and how to form the optimality conditions. Importantly, we do not need to know how the problem is solved in the forward pass. The remainder of this tutorial will explore these concepts further, plus other considerations such as computational efficiency and uniqueness of solutions on the theoretical side and software frameworks and applications on the practical side. I would like to thank Steve for this talk. At this point in the tutorial, you should be familiar with the concept of deep learning as data flow graph, know how to decouple forward and backward paths, the implicit function theorem, and what are deep declarative nodes. In the next part of the tutorial, Dylan Campbell will explain some applications and hands-on coding.